of Evelyn Welch. We trust that you will hear a word that will comfort you in your grief and give you hope as to your own mortality. With, Christ, with faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister Evelyn for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, remember before you this day our sister Evelyn. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth, until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Go on, help me. Go on, help me. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Who he believes in me, though he died, yet shall he live. And whoever believes and lives in me shall never die. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am strong, I am dead, no light, no danger, no principality, no power, no things present, no things to come, no time, no death, no anything else, all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. But to this end, Christ died and lived a day that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go ahead. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are our everlasting arms. Our refrain is, Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. In the midst of life we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who by our sins are justly angered. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, O Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at the last hour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. We sit at the time for the eulogy or tributes, whichever would come first.
Good morning, everyone. I am Gail, mommy's second child and first daughter. Our dearest and beloved mom, Evan Theresa Welch, was an only child born to Matthew Williams and Catherine Williams on the 16th of November, 1930, in San Juan. As a teenager, she moved with her mother to 60th Street, Barataria, and lived there until her death. Mom attended Osborne High School, Barataria, but was unable to complete secondary school education due to her mother's illness and the difficult financial situation that existed. Later, she attended sewing classes where she learned to make all types of clothes. At the age of 19, her first job was at the match factory in Pittsburgh in San Juan. While there, she told us that she and her best friend at the time, my godmother, Viola Richards, saved the money from their salary and each purchased a bicycle which they rode to work. From the match factory, she moved to Caribbean Packaging Industries, that is in Mount Hope, where she worked as a machine operator until her retirement. Formerly married to Andrew Sonny Welch at the age of 24, they produced four beautiful children, Glenworth, Gail, Genevieve, and Garnett. Mom loved all of her children, but she adored her only grandson, Randy, and her two great-grandchildren, Lashona and Rondell. She was very protective of all of us, like a mother hen hovering over her chickens. Even as adults, she would only stop worrying when we returned home safely. If she found I was taking too long to home, she will find out where I was and at what time I will be returning. She loved to dance. Told that as a youth she was an excellent ballroom dancer. In children, she used to brag to us in me and your father in our young days used to win ballroom dance affairs in Baratari, you see? She was very fashionable. My Aunt Pearl, who's our father's sister, often told me your mother was a real dresser in her days, always with matching earring shoes and handbags. So as children, mom and often sold our clothes and ensured that we were well put together for Mom not only loved the fashion of clothes, but she also loved a beautiful home, nice curtains and furniture. Needless to say, Christmas season was her favorite time of the year, since it was the time when she did what she loved the best, decorate our home as beautifully as she could within her means. My sister, Jenny, inherited that trait from her. Just as she loved beautifying inside the house, she loved beautifying outside the house. Mom enjoyed gardening and she loved the flowers. Attending, Attending to her plants and flowers in the garden with her pride and, and joy. joy. Even, Even when, when mom, mom was no longer able, able to go to, go to care for her garden, she used to rely on poor me to do so. I must admit that I could not keep up with her standards and certainly did not do a good job. Unintentionally, I would kill some of her plants, her plants including a cactus plant, just imagine. <laughs> you know that you know that did not go down well to her. Two days before her death, in her weakened state, she asked her caregiver, Jennifer, to take her to the gallery. As she reached the gallery, she had Jennifer call me immediately to tell me to have the grass in her garden cut now. 
Obediently and thankfully, I was able to fulfill her request and inform her that it was done. Mom was a practicing economist. Maybe she was forced to be so very early in her life when her mom became ill and she had to leave school prematurely. As such, while we were growing up, mom had to cut and contrive, make sacrifices and do without or make do with very little in order to maintain and finance our home as she ensured that we were well provided for at all times. I remember when mom used to encourage us to join a susu and save our monies. As a matter of fact, it was the susu saving method she used to complete our home despite having to provide for the family. I was not too young to understand that mom used every susu hand she received to build and complete our home room by room. She did not borrow one cent from the bank. Truth be told, she could not afford to. Yet against the odds, she provided her family with a comfortable home. She had, she had a peaceful, generous, and caring spirit. She was always willing to assist anyone, be it a family member, a friend, or a stranger. Growing up, accommodating family members at our home from Tobago elsewhere was the norm. So much so, Jenny, my younger sister, with her saucy mouth, would say, Oh gosh, mommy, I tired sleeping across the bed to make room for people. people. Oh gosh. Such complaint did not deter mom from being accommodating. She had a great sense of humor, although straightforward. Even during her illness, she gave me witty responses and would just burst out with a hearty laugh. She used to say, once a man, twice a child is true. When you were a child, I was the mother and you were the child. But now, you are the mother and I'm the child. So hurry up and change my pamper. <laughs> or whenever I go out and return home, she'll be laughingly saying, what you bring for your child? Don't talk about when I was going out. As I enter the room, she will do a quick scan of me head to toe. And she will say, Gail, I don't like that boldness on top of your head. Go and fix that hair now. Similar treatment was handed out to Jenny. Sometimes when Jenny visited, she would skin her face and say, where you get that dress? I don't like it. Jenny used to get upset saying, mommy, I don't see anything wrong with my dress. Her response will be, well, I don't like that dress. Mom loved the Lord and loved going to church to praise and worship him. As children, she indoct indoctrinated in us the importance of getting up early on a Sunday and going to church. Needless to say, she was committed to tithing to her church of worship. Mom will ensure that I place her monthly contribution in the envelope and say, don't forget to give Miss Cole to carry for me or she would have it ready for when the priest came to bring her Holy Communion. She used to have Jennifer, her caregiver, read the Bible scriptures and play gospel songs for her while she listened or sang along. Special thanks to her dedicated caregiver, Jennifer, whom she relied on, loved, and appreciated greatly. As her children, we did all that was humanly possible for our mom during her illness. Now, we are comforted by the fact that she lived a long, wonderful, and fulfilling life. As the coin says, she was on borrowed time. She was 93 years old. She lived an additional two scores and three. What more could we have asked for from the Lord? We know that mom prepared her soul and was ready to meet the Lord. We know that God is our final judge 
but in our hearts we are confident and at peace knowing that she is resting safely and peacefully in his loving arms. We love you, Mom, and we will truly miss you. Any tributes? Gail, any tributes? No. Okay. Yes, I'm going to make the announcement. Those who are at the front, we have seats up front here, at the front of the church, the entrance of the church, there are seats up front. You can make your way up here, either on that side or through the side door. Yes, you can come on inside. Can we stand for prayer? Almighty God, remember before you today your servant Evelyn, and we pray that heaven open to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served you in the past, Evelyn may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We sing the hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. It's not in the, the book. But we know it? Oh, blessed assurance, sorry. Blessed assurance. Which one you saying that they don't want? Which one? People know it. That's that's what the people want. So we were saying that. The assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. There of salvation, of
kindly sit for the ministry of the word. And just to know that there are still seats up front. The first reader, there are still seats up front. A reading, a reading from the Word of God, Isaiah 25, verses 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clay. And he will destroy on this mountain the straw that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And stop walking up and down the man. What you want?
second lesson. Pleasant good morning to all. A reading from the Word of God written in, in the book of Revelation to John. Um, John chap, Revelation chapter 21, this is 2 to 7. And it says, And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I was asking, you know, I wouldn't want you walking up and down. Remember to tell them to stand. Remember to tell them to stand. Sequence him. Kindly stand. When we all get to heaven,
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment but has passed from death to life. Very truly I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Come to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may have your seats, please. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and does not pass under judgment but pass from death to life. And when I think about our sister Evelyn, I saw her and I still think of her as a believer in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I remember her as a woman who loved praise and worship. I would have liked what just happened here because when we went to her home, we would usually do some praise and worship before we administer the blessed sacrament. And you would hear her, even in her weakened state, singing along with us and looking very cheerful. So I know she was one who loved to praise the Lord, who loved to worship him. And I look forward to those visits as I'm sure she looked forward to having us. I also think of her as one who knew how to give thanks. We heard that, that she was an economist in the home. We were told that she used susu so that she can build her house and so on and support the family. But what we would have seen was not one who mourned about how she would get her funds going and so on, but one who, when we hear the words, in everything you give thanks, one who gave thanks in everything. Everything that she had, she gave, and she was also a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. Her generosity for giving for the building of God's church right here on earth made her what I would call a good steward of God, a good steward of God, giving thanks for all that the Lord has bestowed upon her. And I never heard her complaining. A steward too of his creation as she tended to her garden and the beauty of God's creation in the flowers. And she did that to the very end, as we heard. A protective mother, a dancer, a lady of fashion, a home dresser, 
a gardener, peaceful, generous, caring spirit, a contented woman, I would say, really contented and at peace with herself, even in her weakened stage. And she was a good mother who raised her children to love God and also to love her and to care for her, to show compassion for her. And we saw that when we visited the home. True to the word of God that you raise up a child that you want to see that the way that child should go and the child would not depart from it. The last time we visited to give her the blessed sacrament and final rites, we noted the care that was taken of her. And that in her last days, what she had playing was either scripture in word or in song, or a combination of word and song. What else can you want to be at peace with God? What, kind of, what other kind of environment can children prepare for their mother as she transitions? And that's why the words, very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believe in him who sent me has eternal life, does not come under judgment, but pass from death to life. We would like to think that is what would have happened to our dear friend, our mother, our neighbor, our cousin, Evelyn. And that at the last hour, she did not turn away from God because the environment was provided for her. Rick Warren talks about a purpose-driven life, one in which you become best friend with God, being continuously in the presence of God. Our sister was in that presence of God. And she lived her life with a purpose, a purpose to serve God, a friendship that God established firmly by his death in his, that his son endured on that cross for our salvation. And so, as we remember our sister Evelyn, let us remember that she was a faithful servant of God and out of that love for God, we have that example in her always giving thanks and always helping those in need. But I want us, while we think about uh, Evelyn and that she would rest in peace, because she has done her part. And she has taken with her the records of her deeds. But we need to look at our own lives. And as we listen to the words of scripture, I trust that we would think about it, we would find more peace in our heart, we would find that hope in the word that we hear, that our sister is no longer in pain, no longer in sorrow, but in a place of peace that passeth all understanding. But we must also think about our own mortality. The reading from the prophet Isaiah speaks of a feast as a picture of the kingdom when the Messiah will reign over Israel and all nations of the world. It speaks to Israel entering its glory and the Gentiles would come to Zion to worship the Lord. In other words, all will glorify, all will worship the one true and living God. Out of belief and faith in him. Jesus too speaks about that promised kingdom in several parts of the scripture. But I want to, I want to think about Matthew chapter 8 verse 11 and Luke chapter 12, 28 to 29. And they point to, to what is noted 
in Isaiah in his prophecy that food that does not merely sustain life but at that feast death itself will be conquered death will be swallowed up forever I don't know about you but I love that image of death being swallowed up forever and that the sovereign Lord would wipe away the tears from all faces the true God and Savior would be revealed clearly to all and in Revelation chapter 21 verses 2 to 7 points to a similar picture of that kingdom as the holy city the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven from God the bridegroom arrives to be God among mortals to dwell among them and wipe every tear from their eyes so that death will be no more mourning and crying and pain will be no more that God will make all things new God as the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end will make all things new giving water to the thirsty from that spring that spiritual spring that will never run dry it confirms for us that belief that belief in God when we believe in God weeping endures for a night but joy comes in the morning but more than that is the God the Alpha and the Omega the creator of all things in heaven and on earth beneath the earth as well that that God that one true and living God is on is in control and has sacrificed his son on earth by whose death and resurrection he has conquered death and the grave dear friends let us be reminded that there is no sting in death and there is no victory in the grave for Jesus conquered them all but I want us to note one thing that this gift from God is conditional for in Revelation chapter 21 verse 7 it says those who conquer will inherit those things those who conquer those who believe and are faithful to God and accepts Jesus as their Savior will be children of God and the Lord will be their God he will be their father the scripture continues in verse 8 that the cowardly the faithless the polluted the murderers the fornicators the sorcerers the idolaters and all liars their place will be in that lake that burns with fire and sulfur which is the second death so we they, they usually say the Anglican Church doesn't preach fire and brimstone but the scripture says it the scripture talks about those who are faithful and those who are faithless so which one will you choose which one would you choose our sister already chose her part but which one would you choose let's think about that let's think about our own mortality and the day that will come when we transition from this earthly life in the physical body and today is like a dress rehearsal when one day we may be right in a coffin like this or some people choose other ways but certainly we don't get out of this life on earth alive not so well, everybody gone quiet in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 we are told that if we are in Christ we are new creation 
And if we live a life of faith in God and believe in his son, Jesus Christ, and of course to be obedient to his word, we are transformed into his likeness and his glory. The faithful will praise and glorify the Lamb of God as faithful stewards, as faithful stewards of God. In the gospel according to John, chapter 21, verses 1 to 9, we are told about that resurrection of Jesus, about it being revealed by the woman who remained faithful servants of his even after his death. They discovered that the tomb had been, the stone had been removed. The linen wrapping was lying in a corner and the tomb was empty. And as this Lenten season, as we look forward to that resurrection Sunday, that Easter Sunday, we glorify that the tomb is empty. Because that empty tomb gives us joy and it ought to strengthen our belief. It ought to strengthen our trust in God. That we can hold him at his promise of eternal life for all who believe. For the Son of Man moves from life to death on the cross and was resurrected on the third day. Again, that conquering of death, that conquering of the grave, that conquering of sin. And he rose from the dead for our salvation. He died on the cross and rose from the dead for your salvation and for my salvation. Your sins and my sins. Do we want that salvation in Christ? Do we want that salvation in Christ? Yes, we are all sinners because we are what mortal? And we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So let's not fool ourselves when we start to talk that we are saved. We're not yet saved. We are being saved on a daily basis according to how we live our life and trusting on God's mercy because he says, the scripture tells us, we are saved by the grace of God. We are saved by the grace of God. But one thing we do know that despite all the money we may have, despite the, the, the educational status and whatever, whatever, the houses we may have, what we would have acquired here on earth, we cannot buy salvation. And we cannot buy eternal life. The mercy of God and the good things we do will grant us that salvation. St. Paul tells us that it's not through our works, but by the grace of God that we are saved. But if we live that life of trust and obedience, if with penitent hearts we ask for God's forgiveness of our sins, I am sure he will be merciful to us as the scripture says to us in other places. So as we ponder our walk in and for Christ, as we ponder how it can affect where we go in the spirit, as we transition, I want us to dwell on these few words that are usually very popular for funerals. From John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Jesus says these words, right? So Jesus says, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come 
and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And he said as well, and you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And let's listen carefully to Jesus' answer. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. So I urge you, dear friends, to choose Jesus, to choose life over death. Jesus wants all of us to come to him. He bids us come and die, to die of our worldly pleasure, of our worldly life, to be a new creation in the spirit. So let's think about that and think about whether right now, do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, as your Redeemer? And if that means yes, just talk to God quietly at this time, seeking forgiveness of your sins, pleading to him that you would trust him, hoping in him. Say quietly, Jesus, I ac accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe and trust in you as the way, the truth, and the life. I believe in God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I will worship and adore the triune God. And I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Stand, stand, stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And is even the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We follow us in the order of service. Can I say, Lord, hear us. Your response, Lord, graciously hear us. For our sister Evelyn, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary and dead stress. Draw near to us who mourn for evil and dry the tears of those who weep. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend, and put us in our sorrow. Lord, 
Lord, hear us. Lord graciously hear us. Lord graciously hear us. The promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister even to the joys of heaven. Lord hear us. Lord our graciously hear us. Our sister Evelyn was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. Evelyn was nourished with your body and blood. Grant Evelyn a place at a table in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Comfort us in our sorrows and the death of our sister Evelyn. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Evelyn, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Offertory hymn is hymn number 170. As you realize the heat we have here in the church, we are trying to air condition, so we are asking you to contribute towards that. Thank you. And for our outreach program, of course where we do things for the needy. God sent his son. We are the baskets. We are the baskets. Giving them all. Oh, Helen. Yeah. 
understand? To your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine and money to offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. The bread and the wine would become our spiritual food. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comfort us in with the blessed hope of eternal life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life has changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna is the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Form B, page 135, for those following with books. Holy and gracious Father, all creation truly gives you praise. Our life, all holiness comes from you. To your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Therefore, we bring these gifts and we ask you to make them holy by the power of the Holy Spirit. That they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice of all mankind. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, for the remembrance of me. To the acclamation, Christ Jesus is Lord. He has set us free from law of sin and death. In his name alone is our salvation. Father, calling to mind the death your son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension, his continual intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, in constancy and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary with Evelyn and all the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and through him 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, a soul will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing right songs of praise to him. Dear friends, once you are communicant at your church, feel free to sup at the, the table of the Lord. Please come around. Body and blood of Christ broken and shed for you. Body and blood of Christ broken and shed for you. Body and blood of Christ broken and shed for you. Who's spraying their hands? Who's sanitizing them? Broken and shed for you, Hazel. <laughs> Body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. Interesting. Okay. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that, that in your great love, you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> we stand now for the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant, Evelyn, with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to the earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying you are dust. And to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our sound. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant, Evelyn, with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more. Neither sign, but life everlasting. Let us commend our sister Evelyn. To the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant Evelyn, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitation, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Into your hands. your hands, O merciful Saviour, we commend your servant Evelyn. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace. 
and into the glorious company of saints in light. Amen. Committal would be done at the cemetery. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. I'm walking on my way to the Lord.